So, Hazen, why did you choose today to give blood? Because today's a great day to give blood. I mean, I've been exercising, eating good, having all my vitamins. I mean, today's a great day to give blood, and I don't want to get my blood all gunked up with cholesterol and stuff. That's true. A good lifestyle helps control cholesterol. But did you think about the things that you can't control, like your genetic makeup? Oh, yeah. It's true that exercise, diet, age, and heredity can affect how our blood composition impacts the future health of our heart and arteries. But there is more. Rats. And did you also consider that we're going to need every drop of this blood where we're heading next? Huh? Come in here, man. Yeah. All right. So most animals that live up here in the high country move down to lower elevations where it snows a lot less and they're better able to deal with winter. Yeah, us humans aren't really designed for living in the cold like this. We're actually more tropical animals. Although we can survive in the cold because we have the ability to, well, put on extra layers or take them off to regulate our core body temperature. But animals out there don't have this really cool high performance winter gear like we have. But instead, they have really amazing survival stories to better deal with cold. You know, animals have unique adaptations to deal with temperature. Some migrate to warmer climates, which I think is a fine approach. But look, some animals are restricted to a home range and have to cope with environmental conditions in their habitat. Take bears, for instance. They go into a winter sleep state where their body fat fuels their metabolism and helps keep their body temperature just below normal. Now the wood frog deals with cold temperatures by producing an antifreeze protein in the blood. These frogs living up here in Wisconsin where we have temperatures as low as 20 yeah, degrees below cold. zero can get really cold. We'll actually freeze solid but yet not lose any cells or lose any organs and thaw out again in the spring and away they go. And they, they thaw out early in spring and sing very early. And then there are animals that just tough it out, even in the most extreme environments. Antarctica unleashes one of the most punishing environments on Earth. The sun doesn't shine for almost four months, and the temperature can drop below negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Yet, there are many animals that make this continent their home. Penguins have adapted to survive on the ice, even through the harshest of winters. My name is Rick Urban. I'm curator of birds and mammals here at the Newport Aquarium in Newport, Kentucky. Penguins have a lot of different adaptations in dealing with their cold environment. They have uh, a build up a, a sense of a blubber or a fat deposit that they keep in their body. Seasonally, they always eat different foods which will also help them build up the energy that they need to stay warm during the winter months. Their feathers are very dense too. And see how, how tight, it's almost like petting le a leather because it's, the feathers are very tight and so the water doesn't get into the, the inner core of the, of the body. So that's a very dense insulation factor here. You have counter circulation in your wings and your feet. The main arteries will be going down the solid core of, of the feet. So they'll be coming down and then the, the, they branch out into lots of little arteries that go back and forth into the core of the body and that keeps them very warm. All right, let's review what we just learned. To start, penguins already have an insulation of feathers and lots of fatty tissue. There's not much exposed tissue, water never touches the skin, and the cold is kept out. Also, when we get cold, we get goosebumps. It doesn't really do much for us, 
But imagine if you had feathers or more hair on top of those goosebumps. You would fluff up and trap air around your body, insulating you from the cold. But penguins don't have much protection on their feet. This could potentially pose a big problem for an animal that spends a lot of time standing on ice. Imagine all that cold blood leaving the feet and entering the body. This could really cool the penguin's core. But this doesn't happen because penguins have veins and arteries next to each other in their feet. Heated blood going down to the feet preheats the cold blood before it re-enters the core. Their bodies can send just enough blood to the feet to keep them from freezing, and in doing so, use less energy to heat up the blood traveling back to the core. So yes, we are warm-blooded mammals, and we probably wouldn't survive for very long in the cold without proper gear and shelter. We would have to do like the bears and den up and miss the whole winter season. Well, you have to give credit to all those animals that have evolved ways to be able to survive these intense cold conditions. Yeah, and we've seen that animals like the penguins can survive for months standing on the ice without getting frostbite. Oh, but think about the animals that live in the water around the polar regions, like the incredible beluga whales and polar bears. They are amazing. Well, science is about asking questions. And so, from the poles to the equator, always be asking questions and never stop exploring your world. <sighs> Cold conditions can be very dangerous for us and hypothermia is something you don't want to mess around with. So never leave home without proper clothing, the right gear and a plan for survival.